Let me tell you your penmanship, though. I need to talk to you about this because I missed up Angus and then I missed up. Left-handed, upside-down writer to my age. You're a good man. Brad Hudson, 417 Northeast 21st Street, Ankeny, Iowa. Uh, I, I want to thank you for being here, but I, I guess I've got to call in the question some things. First of all, Representative Kester, please don't do the advance or increase the enrollment for Ankeny. That's a property tax reduction. We'd rather you use those state resources for the kids all across the state. We can levy for property taxes. We have the growth, and I think that's our, our responsibility. As far as 08, 09 being such an awful time because of the cross board cuts, let's remember our history. Greatest recession we've seen since the Great Depression. I think everybody would have thought we would have had a cross board cuts with what was happening at that time. But I, I guess I need to comment, Representative Whitford, I am a constituent of yours, and I get your newsletters, and you responded to me on my school finance letter. And you're telling us how we're down 100 and 1811 million dollars this year. But well, I want to take us back in history to 2012. I'll get to my question. I get to have an introduction. Yes. 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 The room person is behind me. We had a 900 billion surplus and we had the rainy days full. So we implemented a 275 million dollar commercial and industrial property tax credit. And the vast majority of that money is exported out of state, yep. out of state, uh, to corporate interest that don't have any influence here. It's hurting our economy. You've increased, you've increased, you've increased corporate tax cuts. John Deere is getting how many million, tens of millions of dollars in research grants and they don't pay any income tax here and now they don't pay property taxes either. So you say that education is your priority. I don't believe you. I don't believe you when I see these numbers. 344 million, I do your math, represent land and get down to your 219. 43 and a half percent of that 219 the governor proposed is 95.5 million dollars, not 40. Not 40, you're 55.5 million lower. So we're not the priority we used to be. So my question to you, and, and Representative Castor, this summer in your debate, you said, I will only vote for adequate allowable growth, supplemental state aid. So I guess I have to believe that 1.11 in your mind is adequate. We don't think so. We in education think it needs to be 4%. But my question isn't going to be about SSA. My question isn't going to be about SSA. My question is, until we can refund 4% SSA, will you vote against each and every tax cut that becomes before you? So we put children before corporate out-of-state interests in wealthy Iowa. I, what I can promise you is I am very interested in looking at tax reform, including and corporate tax reform. Thank you. Sir, sir, sir. If that's where you want to be, sir, this is not a good place for you. Please be respectful. He's got a right to speak, but listen, we don't need to be that way. Uh, I will commit that I, I am very interested in looking at tax reform, including the ta corporate tax cuts. That's something that um, that we should be looking at all the time. And um, as we look back at the commercial tax break, remember that was a bipartisan bill that when it came to putting the $155 million into it, it was my chamber led by the Democrats that required that $155 million. We were looking at just straight up property tax cuts. The Democrats in the Senate said, no, we're putting 150 some million dollars into it. So that's the history. Quick addition on the 1.1% uh, uh, SSA. The, uh, one of the things that hasn't been mentioned already this morning is that there was, for the first time in too many years, on time, early handling of that matter. I just want our audience to know that I'm, I'm pleased that we reversed that pattern of putting it off late. That doesn't excuse a lower number, but it forced a lower number. Because if we're going to get it done early, we had to find agreement on it. So that's one factor. The other comment is this. I spoke to five bills that deal with flexibility and funding that will look at ways that districts have better use of existing sources. Some of those, including the on-time funding, that I understand uh, that, that Brad just spoke, 
eloquently against it. My point would be, it has a $10 million appropriation. A couple of the others have increased monies for education. We'll see what passes. The only thing I would, would uh, predict, not promise, would be that the $40 million will not be the end game on K-12 funding. We will improve it by things that we couldn't do that early. We will bring forward other things that bring revenue to education in an intelligent way that will have thorough discussion. And um, Brad, I will certainly see and hear you at the Capitol as I try to demonstrate on Thursday when <coughs> I killed a bill by a grassley because of your input. I'm going to be a listener. I promise that. Okay.